Jace here from Sunny South Australia with Elizabeth, my 1972 Triumph 2000, and we're sharing the classic stream with Harry the Stag. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is all about the older style fuel pump that we took out of the Triumph 2500S saloon, the inline six pot engine. A great big uh, lump that we had problems with, as you know, from looking at our other films with the uh, car got collected from Scotland. Anyhow, we did the kind of analysis of all that. And in part of that, we took out the fuel pump that was within it. It's over here on the bench and I'm going to work through it in just a second just to show you a few things. A, um, how it works. B, what to watch out for in terms of the mechanical soundness of it. And I appreciate with a stag you've got uh, more of an electric fired pump in the boot as we have on our UES uh, car. But with this as well, also a risk with using modern day fuels. And I'll talk you through that in just a minute. So I guess like anything else, uh, first thing is to consult the manual and make sure we know what we're talking about. Um, so I have my rather fragmented manual here. It was lent to me by Alan, actually, who did the uh, who did the welding and the painting. Um, and um, so it is falling to bits, but it is still as good as it was when nature was intended. And before that, it's just worthy noting that there are different flavours of um, fuel pump here. This one is the one that we've got, which I think is an early... Um, early type as um, you can see it has the glass bowl at the top there which uh, again I'll touch on in just a second uh, but there were various different types of fuel pump themselves Sim the principles the same but um, they may look different um, when you're up close and personal so just something to be aware of I guess when you are um, dismantling one of these early uh, types let's flip over to the um, the actual pump itself and I'll just talk you through the geography of it and uh, what we plan to do. But before we do all that, let's see if we can get gloved up with some nice protective gloves so I don't get oil all over my clothing. <laughs> right, and a cup of tea, cup of tea. Okay, so here she is. Um, and um, very basically, the these are the fuel lines. If you notice on here, there is a little arrow um, here that uh, where the fuel comes in from the feed from the tank um, through the pump and then out to the engine. This longer metal pipe goes out to the front, in this case on the 2500S, to the um, offside of the car. So for ease I probably just need to undo this knurled nut. Now I'm expecting a little bit of petrol to fly out because as you may be able to see there are there is some petrol in there. Um, I did drain it at the weekend but that's, that's how that works, so a bit like a brake um, hose metal brake hose it's on a there's a little kind of bump on the end that, that feeds into a receptor there so that means a nice tight seal with that all joined up let's put that to one side for now and um, here it is so service 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 they said uh, should involve us undoing this nut on the top and cleaning out the filter so it reckons you can actually unscrew this nut here um, our lever and then move that slightly off to one side it says in the manual <laughs> don't know if we can do it any which way keep turning and then the idea is that ultimately you can take out that bowl if you ever need to clean it should do this every 6,000 miles they said in the manual and I can smell the fuel already so pardon the pong and if you need to clean the bowl or the filter looks like there's a filter here on top of the engine here um, so that's your filter from uh, I guess the fuel tank little bit dirty just needs a bit of a clean there's a few specks of dust on there but it is doing its job and um, the fuel then I guess goes into into there it gets pulled through via um, suction basically and I'll show you what I mean in a minute it's operated on the side so imagine that's in situ there by this lever here um, and very simply that's on the on an eccentric cam in the middle of the engine that that's the cam that also drives the push rods for the rockers up the top of the engine so this um, I've got an eccentric cam kind of every time it goes over it knocks it up and if you see that that's then pulling inside and um, creating a bit of a vacuum by a method I will show you very shortly so let's decide what to do next but basically stripping it down to have a look inside I think would be a logical thing to do um, you've got some screws here which I intend on un undoing and if I don't pollute the garage with lots of petrol that will be a good thing Okay, trusty screwdriver at the ready. Let's just see what happens when we split all this. And I'll probably do it fast forward for you 
so that you don't have to watch me undo all these different All right, so now we've got all the um, screws out. Hopefully that will now break there. There's a seal, as you can see, between the bottom and the top. So I'm hoping that will then just crack off. It's obviously been there for a number of years, so not too sure. Oh, there we go, it's broken. Good, okay. As has come out a lot of petrol too. <laughs> I'll talk you through the various components. That's the top half, um, and that's the bottom half. And now you can see the business end of how this works here is a bit of a rubber plunger for want of a better term i'm sure there's a better word for it than that but i don't know if you can see it the principle of how this operates like i said before that's on a cam in the engine if you imagine um and it's not going to do it now is it that that visibly but if i imagine i'm holding that down it's a spring that pushes it back up by default okay so the spring is pushing it to that position up and actually that is what brings it down and pushes it up so as that's going up the cam basically however many thousands of times a second that is in that chamber pushing up and down inside there fuel in from this side comes in through here and then i think you find pumps out through there out to feed to the engine so very very simple very clever thing to to see um, i think that can also help you prime from the extent so if I imagine that's in the engine bay and you want to prime the the motor or pull put a bit of fuel through I think you can actually pull that to prime it so you imagine that's a manual thing on the outside of the engine but that is the inside with the um, the cam as I say now the issue for modern day fuel of course is that this is made of rubber basically or a type of rubber you can see I'm sure you can replace these and there'll be a way no doubt of pulling this out that is coming out with it oh it's come out <laughs> okay um with the spring which you can now see wasn't planning on that but there you go it's all for harry the stag this isn't it um so there that's the membrane and that is the issue when you're using e10 fuel then over time potentially they reckon the the additional ethanol can affect these rubber uh, diaphragms are basically called so um, that over time could perish them and then they, they use their they lose their they lose their efficiency uh, in terms of pumping um, although it's got metal panels front and back you can see the flexibility of how it actually worked and then down in the depths of that I'm assuming here if you can see the end of the um, the diaphragm rod then that keys into the base there so a, a, a turn of 90 degrees no doubt gets it out of that base part and underneath as i showed you just now you've got the spring uh recessed in that place there that then keeps it pushed up all, all times against the uh the base so so there you go that's that's the uh the fuel pump ac fuel pump very very simple it's amazing isn't it when you think you've got six cylinders and it's doing three four five that well maybe three or four thousand revs that um, this little thing's going up and down like a bride's nighty ten to the dozen um i don't remember those days it's been a long time um but uh, obviously as a matter of course in terms of servicing this before we put it back into the uh the engine uh bay then i'll obviously change all these there's a rubber o-ring in there that needs sorting um i don't know if there's anything else that we need to look at don't think there is really but obviously it would pay us to get a new one of these such that we can have a decent working fuel pump so for now then i thought um, what i do is uh, rebuild it i'm very good at pulling stuff apart as everybody knows but in terms of rebuilding things then uh, not so good maybe um, i'll do it for the purposes of the camera obviously as i said i'll change all the diaphragms and everything else so let's uh, let's start with the, the the diaphragm base let's get the spring on the base there well, that goes then over the the retainer there and i guess now we've got to try and find the the slot from whence this thing came we turned it 90 degrees and that kind of worked nicely so i'm going to try and find the hole now i've not really looked at there you go that's gone turn it 90 degrees and we're in so that's in so that's good as it should be we then put the top uh, back on so making sure we get it the right way around of course Okay, so putting it back together, obviously make sure that the um, feed from the rear is in the right place, not too twisted around as I did just now. 
and equally the output is going the right way towards the front of the engine that's going into the engine back front so what I've done there is the first bolt is going in and then having found that hole hopefully the rest should fairly easily follow because the membrane is in there uh, we'll move around a little bit obviously and all you've got to do is align oh, what you've got to do is align the holes he says such that we have once more and yeah once that first one is in of course then the rest tend to go in a lot more easily um, so obviously that rubber tab there is there to move the stuff around uh, when you need to um, instantly you can test these by um, it says in the manual if you take the um, obviously very carefully if you take the pipe off the front here very very briefly when it's actually mounted on the engine with the fuel feed coming in you can turn it over and you should get a really good squirt of fuel coming out of this end obviously don't do it for very long because you want to set fire at the car but that tests immediately whether or not the pump is working that well um, I guess you could also do that before you took it out the car to see if your diaphragm was working okay and if it's a bit weak then you know the only kind of failure component in that really is that rubber plunger as you saw with the metal discs on so um, that may just help you get around that challenge um, obviously when you're doing this for real um, make sure your galleys and gullies are clear of grit and rubbish fuel can notoriously get contaminated with all sorts of gubbins as you saw in that cap there um, only tiny but will affect it a little bit uh, but then that's that's what it's there to do it's it's a filter as well as a pump isn't it um, and um, when it's on the engine you can actually see on that glass bowl that goes on the top how much fuel you can actually see the fuel in there swilling around so you can see whether or not the fuel is getting at least to this part of the fuel system from the tank in the not in the boots actually between the back on the s uh, saloon it's actually in between the back seat and the boot kind of nicely tucked away which i always think is a good thing because uh, for me sometimes i worry about the stag with the petrol actually in the boot or well, the petrol tank more specifically in the boot but a good rear end crunch could actually rupture that tank and be a fire risk whereas with the 2500s then at least you know you've got a few feet of safety um they didn't do crumple zones i don't think so much back in the 1970s although it was beginning to come in i think they were crash tested to a degree no doubt someone will let me know on that um but uh, anyway you get the get the general idea there's your filter obviously we'll clean it before we put this back on the saloon that goes that that there here's your bowl again should really be nicely cleaned out where you can see the fuel flying about it's glass actually and then your plunger goes back on top um, just a screw adjuster on there he says confidently hasn't been used for 50 years so it's probably why it's a bit stiff and obviously that makes a good seal against that o-ring i showed you earlier on and um, the jobs are good and and that's not a bad test actually you can you hear that so that's the manual lever I was referring to earlier that pulls the plunger down. And I suppose the question, will this pump work as it is? Well, it was before we blew up, obviously. But the fact is, you can hear that hump, hump, hump coming through. So it's pumping. That's pumping air, obviously, not fuel. But that for me means it's, it's working. I've, I've reinstalled it correctly. And uh, obviously make sure these are all nipped up reasonably tight. You don't want fuel coming up the side of the uh, the split there in the body and the top but uh, there you go so I thought it'd be interesting love all this 1970s engineering this is stuff we were doing back in the 70s on some of our cars simple little idea but uh, clever at the same time and um, reliable these cars ran on for years unless they blew up like Eddie the S did but that's another story all right guys so uh, hopefully you found that useful just to see what the inside of the fuel pump looks like learn a few facts about how they operate appreciate on a stag v8 you may well have an electric pump rather than a manual one like this but nevertheless it's useful knowledge i think to be aware of uh, when we talk about 
E5 fuels versus E10 fuels, E10 having more ethanol in them, then that rubber membrane that you saw is under threat and over time will perish uh, even more so than it would do if it was just in normal operation because of that ethanol area. So that's why we've got to watch out when we're refilling our stags with um, fuel and any other classic car actually that isn't compatible with the E10 versus the E5. Okay, so really interesting you guys. Please feel free to comment below. Um, really interested in any ideas you have, any videos you'd like us to do in addition to this one uh, on areas that you'd like to find out about that you think might be useful for others, I'm all ears. So happy to uh, work with you. Just let us know in the comments and we'll be in touch. Meantime, um, on to the next video and we'll catch you online very soon. Cheers for now. See ya.